Everybody, welcome. Rivalry week. X's and Knowles. It's me, Trey. It's him, Kevin. Uh, it's him, Adam. I don't know. They're both up there. My, <laughs> can refer, the camera gets reversed. It's all fun and games here. And I just I can't even get my I can't even get my left and right straight because it is rivalry week. The Knowles are nine and zero. It's our ninth film review of the season. But guys, Knowles twenty four seven has risen the energy levels. They have brought their game to rivalry week. As shall we, because we're doing something a little bit different. Normally, we like doing these film reviews because it'll give you the story of what really happened on Saturday. But it also gives you, I, I always think it's instructive because it gives you hints on what things FSU can carry forward, what sort of team. It's kind of indicative, it's predictive, and it's analytical. It's, it's a lot of good stuff. To me and to us, honestly, the game at Pitt with all the receivers out, the way that it was managed... I don't think it's indicative of anything. I think it was more of an aberration, at least offensively. Defensively, they did great. There's not even that much to break down there because they yeah. just sucked the life out of Pitt other than a couple of shot plays. And they have, and it's indicative of how they've been playing since that second half of the Clemson game. Offensively, I don't really think there's anything we can take forward because I don't expect the Florida State offense to look like that again. So what we wanted to do for Rivalry Week is to kind of delve into the opponent. Maybe take a look at some of the film of our rival and break it down like how we do for Florida State to give you, the people, an idea of just what things that this Miami team does and doesn't do well. And Adam, on like his third post on Twitter, workshopped it, and the response was pretty good, huh, huh big guy? Like, people seem like they like yeah. the idea. Yeah. Uh, I don't think only one person was like, yeah, let's do pit, but. For the majority, everybody was like, oh, "Let's talk about." Uh, I'm not going to mention their name. I'm going to I'm going to pull Mike Norvell and not mention their name. That school way down south. Oh, you're going to Voldemort rule. I yeah. like it. Okay, <laughs> those guys down south. All right, I am ready to go, Kev. I don't think we've done this as a group. Obviously, your your opponent previews. It's the best in the biz, dude. I love. We watch it's a masterpiece. Them. We love them. Every single Thank one, you. artfully crafted and and just molded into the best content on the internet. Are you excited to do one with the both of us, or are we just going to muck up the whole process? <laughs> yeah, so I, I do have the script. I'm making the video for my. So there's still going to be a good one. There's still going to be like the script. Show like a, the a five, script. I'm probably going to talk about most of the stuff I'm going to talk about in my future video, but it'll it'll be more of like a summary of this video. So I'm excited to do both. I think that uh, I, I don't want to give any respect to Miami's name, so I'm going to say I'm fine. Because you know, whatever uh, they're uh, Wake Forest, Miami, whatever they're synonymous. Um, same, 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 same. <laughs> um, but I love how much you don't like them, it's my favorite part of you. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk more about the team down south, and uh, yeah, you'll you'll probably hear a lot of, of both things, but you know, the other one will have soundtrack music, this one will have Trey, you know, they each have their own qualities. <laughs> Did you just get a like into elevator music, Trey? I, I've been liking to much worse. All right, so we're gonna have two. We're gonna have two two tasty plates of video film for you. It's gonna be the team who shall not be named against Clemson and the team who shall not be named against NC State. We think we want to give them. They had a really good performance against Clemson. I, I still don't know how they won. I have not watched that game to this point, so I can't wait to watch that. And then NC State is their latest performance. A little bit different than that last one, but. We don't know which quarterback's going to play, so it's going to be good to get a flavor of pretty much all sides of Miami, good, bad, and <laughs> ugly. Mm. All right, lay it on me. More ugly than anything else. Speaking right, can of we talk oh. Yeah, there, there we go. It's It always starts with Cristobal making some face. Star of the show. It's kind of crashing Decent attendance. Over. Not bad attendance for a Miami game. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Only. You're little literally deal. playing Clemson and. It's, it's that actually Miami. might have been their band. Don't worry, that piped in crowd noise sounds great. All right, four and two. All right, it's a ton of ton of cover one out of out of Miami. Yeah, so you can see the, the guy fall. That's main coverage. So I think uh, Clemson actually blows us here. They they need to yeah. get a kick and a wrap here. If they if he gets a if the tackle gets a wrap there, this play is going to bust. But yeah, he's 78 decides he doesn't want to block anybody. He's expecting a kick outside on, I believe that's the Saint, um, the backer. And he just doesn't he just doesn't adjust to it. If he adjusts here, this play's gonna pop this play's gonna pop. 
Uh, good instinct by the uh, by the linebacker, though, triggering when he's seeing the movement out of the offensive line. I mean, Florida State has been known uh, to move our offensive line around on the counters and the, the powers and the downs and mm-hmm. things like that. I wonder if Mike Norvell is going to try to take advantage of that really aggressive linebacker play. Well, yeah, so, I mean, you can see that even on the down block, he misses. He, he lets go of this block. I mean, that's yeah. really what hurts you. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. That's Boyaga. I think I'm saying it right. I mean, he, he's a really good player for them. He's Maui been, Noah. Maui Noah, thank you. He's been a player oh, that's come in God. and really solidified the middle of that defense for them at the linebacker level, and um, they, they've been lucky to get him. Transfer portal guy, you know, there's a lot been made out of their media about <laughs> them using the transfer portal, and there's one that came in. It's been a, been a big impact for them this year. Clutching my pearls. My heavy transfer portal edition impact. Oh, my Lord. I don't, uh, I don't get it. I don't that. know, dude. He, Klubnik had a lot of time here. I guess nobody was open. Well, they, yeah. they, do, a, they do a pretty good job of uh, – they're, they're doing what's kind of called a cone coverage here. So, essentially, double teaming this guy on, on the backside with two, two deep safeties, which they can do because it's third and twelve. So you can see here early, it looks like this is open for potentially a first down. But after a second, you see the safety is actually there. So probably good no throw there by by Cade. And early on in games, this this Miami defense moves around pretty quick. I think it's important to note that this Clemson, they're, they're not going to show it on the on the broadcast, on the, on the condensed version that we're watching. But on the broadcast itself, I believe Clemson played Wake Forest week four, and they threw for like 170 yards. So this isn't a Clemson offense that was prolific at this point. They're a much different program playing at home. Um, Clearly. You know, they, they just beat Notre Dame. Uh, they played Florida State extremely tough earlier in the year at home. They just seem to have a different energy there. Going on the road, uh, this season has been a struggle for them, and it was a struggle for their offense. Miami's kind of got the wake vibe at home, right? It's pretty sleepy. Like <laughs> it's not a lot of that's not a good throw. Um, I, think I think this gets tipped. Yeah, it does. His elbow gets it. Yeah, I they think... they do a lot of you see here that they do a lot of screens. They do a lot of these comeback yeah. routes that you see on this play. They're they're, they're going a, very much a one read passing game. They're just trying to keep it simple, get completions, and then lean on the run game. And this is that was Embry Williams, right? This is the yep. Van Dyke yep. didn't play this game. I think one thing to note too is that this is Miami's sixth game of the season. They have had a lot yeah. of hard fought games since this. They have mm-hmm. had a lot of snaps on a lot of those true freshman bodies. They are not coming into the game against us healthy, and they are coming in in this game with a lot of snaps, dude. A lot of overtime snaps and. Oh my God! What happened here? Well, there are a lot still. Okay, yeah. Let, let's coverage. talk about these past two two plays. So about this one. Well, yeah, this one. So we see yeah. kind of the strength of their their secondary, especially their safeties, is that they tend to be, you know, they're bigger guys, yeah. harder hitters. In kitchens, all going to make a tackle. Then here, you know, Miami's going to play a ton of man coverage. Pretty normal for basically anybody that's ever coached at Miami. Play man coverage. Guy just falls down. Well, my, Miami's been great at tackling the ball in the open field this year. Um, they're one of the better teams in the country at, at doing it. So, you know, you're not going to – data suggests you're not going to win a lot of one-on-ones in the open field against them. They're going to get you down. Um, but I think with your passing game, you can get vertical on them. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess UNC was the best receiving core that that they've played this year, and they yeah, really they got, they, they got Tez Walker, and that's about it. Yeah, um, but Clemson didn't we say Clemson threw for three hundred plus on them? Yeah, Clemson does. Yeah, yeah so I mean, you, and this this is a future Clemson receiving core. Yeah, so Kev, you, you've you've seen what they've done on defense. Do you think there's any danger in in Miami trying to bait some of those like lower percentage throws out of man that a lot of those teams were trying to defend Florida State with at the beginning of the year? Or if Miami does that, are they going to be in big trouble from an explosive play giving up standpoint? Um, I I, I, I think they're going to play man coverage. This is what they do. Uh, well, Will Shipley fumbles here. Oh, oh going how? in. And going then he just kind of like. Down. Just kind of like sits there and doesn't do anything. And this play alone just kind of sums up Clemson's season for him. And that's 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 a fumble recovered by Miami. No touchdown. Um, 
yeah, they're going to play man coverage. They're going to they're going to try to get Florida State low percentage throws. The thing is, when Florida State converts those low percentage throws, their offense moves pretty well. Uh, if they don't, then you might see some drives that that die out, and you, you probably will anyways. Oof. Yeah. So it's Brashard Smith, they haven't gotten him the ball a lot. I would. It's been a talking point. It was a talking point after the game for them about oh, another him fumble, getting more touches and being involved yeah, in the fumble. game plan. So I would expect him to be involved a little bit more this upcoming week. Probably some of the screen game stuff. Maybe in the backfield, but they've got so many good running backs. Like I don't know why he needs to be in the backfield. I don't good really double. know what Clemson's doing here. Yeah, because they, they just really don't have box members. Nope. And they're expecting the safety to come down, and I don't know. I don't know why they they were worried about Emory Williams. The one he's going to run a ton of duo on you, and yeah. So yeah, they they got a good they got a good double team at the point of attack there on that run. But I just I don't. Oh, they really do. They're just going to double team. Yep. I don't and understand big, the big angle. Big yeah. physical offensive line. I mean, it, it's it's a good group. I just see a bad angle from the safety. I mean, is the yeah. it, is the run fit there correct from the linebacker? Ooh. Are they just outnumbered? Like it, that looks pretty. Backers okay. They're outnumbered, but I mean, backers. The, the okay. safety's the safety should be in this gap. This is yeah. the safety's job. Who else has got the got got the edge? Oof, that's tough. Look from the safety. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's right after a turnover. Yeah, you're going in, and then you. Six inch line, then he pops a run on you. There's another angle. Yeah, I just don't know why they're capping four over three on on this little bunch set. Like, they're really not worried about this up here. <laughs> uh, no, they're totally focused on stopping Restrepo on the screen. Like yeah. clearly, they got the numbers for it, and I. It, some, something that might be a concern for Florida State's defense. Do we normally like those bunch sets? Is that how we would have played that, Kev? I mean, I I don't potentially. I mean, no, so we've, that, we, we've been keeping six more often than that. Yeah, that's what we, I would we'd think. Probably roll this guy in late. I I don't think they're going to be too worried about Miami's passing game. I, I think you can trust Renardo Green and um, to Cypress Finchall Cypress to to kind of shut them down on the outside. I, I agree. I, I, I really yeah. don't see that being something. I it's not something Clemson does very often. I I don't know why. I think maybe Miami just caught them in a in a good look. First and ten, a lot of time for Klubnik. Yeah, they drop eight here, trusting their guys. And you know, uh, this is Ruben Bain. He's kind of been their you know breakout star here. He's good, but only so much you can do when it's five on three. I mean, th there is a concern about their their pass rush. Yeah. Can, this little stunt here speeds up Klubnik's clock, so he gets in. I would argue that strength against strength, though, is Florida State's a better offense. Their offensive line's a better pass protecting group than a run blocking group, yeah. for sure. And I think what we're missing a lot is is Miami was effective at shutting down Clemson's run game here. Yeah, yep. That they, they are they are a fair, fairly stout defensive front. Yeah, Clemson only had, like you said, 30-something yards rushing. Isn't that right, Kev? That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just a misplay. Run blitz by Clemson. Mm -hmm. Bringing the pressure on the young quarterback. Mm. Doesn't quite have the arm to get it there. No. Oh, my gosh. They, you might want to don't telestrate those upper sections of that side of the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Night game against Clemson. What are we doing here? Oh, look at Shipley Catatonic. Right, How are we losing quarter. to these guys? <laughs> yeah, so this is this is where a lot of Clemson's success came just off. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you got man coverage, right? So you're just mm -hmm. going to run a crossing route. That's hard to defend in man coverage and easy completion. He's going against the safety, James Williams. I tell you what, Adam, I like Florida State going against Miami at the end of the season with some of the, the man beater stuff that they've shown in the middle part of the schedule than I would if they played him game two or three. I, I feel like we've gotten a little bit more diverse on the route concept tree. Yeah. To where I, I think I think Mike's going to dial up some stuff, some crossing stuff to beat these coverages. Yeah, I'm curious to see how much. Oof. 
I think Miami's going to look at game plans that other teams or blueprints that other teams have kind of put on tape, you know, whether that be Pitt last week or, um, you know, some of the games earlier in the season and they're going to, they're going to walk guys up. I think they're going to be aggressive in, in the receivers faces. I think they're going to plan on bringing a ton of pressure. I think they're going to challenge this team to be able to, to run the football. And I, I, I fully expect it to be an ugly, sloppy offensive game in the, to, to start. Um, just, just, just because of that pressure. And I, I think that, you know, that this isn't a team that's going to Florida state. That's going to be able to come out and just run the football early. Um, I, I do expect the offensive line to, to have its issues in the beginning of the game, just because that's kind of, that's kind of what that group is right now. Um, any game over, do you think it might resemble like at least at the beginning, any, anyone that we've played so far, I, mean, I, I think it could look a lot like Duke, right? I mm-hmm. think that's the one that people keep throwing out. I, yeah, I keep or, hearing... even, or even Pitt. Like I, I can see it looking like Pitt. I don't. I I don't know. They, they're even... tough read. They're a tough read. They've been so bad these last couple weeks on offense. Like, yeah, it's like who are you? Like, what, yeah. what, who's the real Miami? Yeah, you know, is Van Dyke gonna recapture some magic that we haven't really seen lately? Um, you know, they're gonna. You know they're going to play motivated as as hell. Like you know what you're going to get from them effort wise. Um, it is interesting. I, I, I respect you. I respect their defense, but I still don't think it's like a great group. Now a lot of self inflicted mistakes from Clemson, like you said, going into the oh, end here. zone, and they they are aggressive. But I, man, you can catch them, especially with how good Florida State's screen game has been lately. Like there's. Right we've shown a lot of things over the past couple weeks. Now I do think that they're going to get us off schedule a couple times and there might be yeah. a couple short drives because they do yeah. bring a pretty tremendous amount of pressure and that will mm-hmm. get home. But at, over the course of a 60 minute game, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, I mean, this is, this is curious. So it seems like they've got this little short motion. Miami's kind of in a run blitz here. They, do that, they, ran, they ran up what's quite a bit against Clemson. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing anything that like. I, I don't know if that's that's a matchup thing. I think so they just, Shipley gets hurt here. I I don't think Miami is terribly disciplined in the, in their in their blitz lanes. I, I I honestly think they're they're better when they don't blitz, and they're able to get pressure naturally. Could be a big game for Jordan Travis on the ground then, Kev. As far as like scrambling and like playmaking ability, we saw that a little bit against Pitt. Like that play to Destin Hill comes to mind. Some of that like kind of like sandbox playground stuff. Yeah, I mean, and you saw it against how they played UNC. They they dropped back a lot more against UNC than they did Clemson. And and um, back. So Clemson's from running split zone here. It's a Taylor great play by Fifty Six. Taylor just beats the guard. Yeah, I mean. He... Yeah, they've Leonard got Taylor. really talented guys up front. Yeah, and this this is a good offensive line. This offensive line that that was able to get some successful runs against Florida State's defense, and so yeah, I I I don't think you should take their defensive line lightly. It's definitely the best group they have on the field. Yeah, but the thing about Taylor too is, man, he's he'll have a game like this, and then he'll play like Virginia. Lol. He'll play Virginia and have like a like a tw- that's not good, uh, like a twenty six PFF grade, dude. It's just the whole team is inconsistent all across the board, every level. Yeah, see, this looks by the end of it like it's you know good coverage. Uh, that just a great throw by Klubnik, but you'll see actually right here mm-hmm. that this this dude's cooked. This is actually a late throw by Club Nick, underthrown to make the coverage look better than it is. Well, he's got to step up. Well, yeah, but Kev hates Keith. I'm I'm gonna defend Keith. I'm just I'm just saying that 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 this this doesn't look to be as good of coverage. Like this is replicable. no, yeah. In the end, it looks better than what it actually is. Right. I'm saying that Miami got beaten mm-hmm. coverage here. I yeah, I, I yeah. think we're seeing their linebacker, their safeties struggle a little bit in man coverage against this linebacker, against this tight end. Um, and that's how they're able to get some of these passing yards. Yeah, Kinchins is a little overhyped. Uh, he's made a lot of inter- he's he's gotten a lot of interceptions, and that's great. But he's a little. I think he's slightly overrated. He he's given some receptions up and. Maybe a little bit too aggressive playing for the interception rather than like playing for like the pass breakup, maybe. Maybe. 
I mean, they're really Watson good at getting Bills, takeaways. So, all right, so they're also good at turning it. the ball over. God, Williams has a ton of time here, and then yeah, he he's 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 a little passive with the ball. I'm not I'm I'm not as worried about oh, him. Oh my I, god! Yeah, that's a uh, that linebacker from Clemson. Forgot yeah, his name. Bear Carter. Yeah, Bear Carter. Well, and, and Miami's offense was really just vanilla this game. I mean, just yeah, well, obviously we've seen screens and hitches. Who got there in the summertime? Like, it's a tough ask. It really is. I I really would be surprised if the, if they decided to play Williams. I, I think that would be the wrong move. Um, because Van Dyke is, I mean, he at least gives you a chance that he's he's going to have a a retro Van Dyke moment. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think we'll we'll see when we watch some of that NC State film. There's something going on with I, well, I don't know. He's clearly it, hurt. Yeah, I know that. The, the, I that's think they're true. trying to protect. I think they're trying to protect a lot of red shirts for these other, for the other two quarterbacks. They don't really want to play them and burn their shirts, but they might be forced to at this point. Yeah, and Van Dyke is hurt, but there's there's something too with the way he's processing and he's like just falling down without getting pressure sometimes, and some of the throws where it's not like I don't know. There's something going on, man. Maybe it's the, maybe it's a crisis of confidence or something with the kid. Man, you might actually have something if Phil Moffat decides to block. Oh yeah, you're a big boy, dude. You gotta you gotta bring the load uh, there. I'm curious to see if the twenty three does a good job of recovering. So stinking aggressive. What did you say, that, Adam? I said I'm curious to see if if running running or quarterback run game stuff is there because they are they are really so aggressive. Like I haven't seen a lot of opportunities, and I've watched a couple of games against UNC uh... after like breakdowns and pass pro. Like you can take off on them, but because yeah, they're in like, man coverage, they're running true quarterback run game. I don't. A lot of it's not there just because they are bringing so many dudes play after play. Yeah, they're they're going to be really aggressive. They're gonna they're gonna have numbers in the box. Like they they're their guys. Pick. Let's let's see this one. Does this get does this bounce off somebody's hands? I don't think so. I think Klubnik just yeah. throws it to the wrong orange. So Bain beats the right tackle, and then no, he's trying to throw it away, and he didn't get it out of bounds. Like, yeah. Oh, and that's a pick. He picked it. Up. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Come on, Cade. It's what are you doing? Like. Nice, no, you're right. nice I should love Cade Klubnik more. I think he's a really good quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Miami's going to try to do, though. Yeah. They're just going to line up and try to run, try to run their duo stuff and their inside zone stuff. Like a you know, they team sh- point attack. They should, honestly, based on how some of the teams have yeah. have had success against Florida State. So that's something that they're going to have to play. Florida State's yeah. linebackers. We're going to have to fight through double teams better. Um, that's something that we've shown some susceptibility to. But what's interesting to me is I don't think teams have run inside zone and like duo well at you. They've done like if you think about Duke, Duke got outside on you. Better. Yeah, they got the tackle and, and Wake and did too a little bit, didn't they? Am I, I, mean, I don't, confusing those? I don't think that's necessarily <laughs> been Miami's game. Like that's not who they want to be as a run game. Is so, this Miami's uh, game? This is definitely not. I think this is mostly what I see out of Miami's offense. Vertical passing game is, has not been there so far. What so happened with that, Saturday, Kev? But... Is that just – what happened just, there? I it's think – yeah, at the post, he's expecting this guy to get – to win inside. And honestly, he's got the leverage here. And then he just, for some reason, decides to take this route after oh. the ball's kind of been released. And it just kind of leads his quarterback out to dry. Do they – is it just Restrepo? That is a horrific route. That is not good. That was not Restrepo. I know. That's what I'm saying. Do they have anybody else but Restrepo? Like, uh, they've been, is his name Colby Young? Um, yeah. There's a couple. He's a really dudes. athletic uh, wide receiver. They have big, big, big dude. I don't think they use him as well as they could, but he's got talent. It's Maui Noah. Should have been a safety, but they didn't give it to him. Yeah, they did not for some reason. Oh man, well they're trying to look at them. All sixty-five people doing this at the same time at Harvard. Dude, you can't hold the ball against them. You got to throw it or get out of there. Yeah. See, another hitch, another comeback route. I mean, it's pretty standard stuff. Yeah, I don't think their corners are great. Uh, I know that they. Oh, sorry, talking about <laughs> the, the other side of the ball. Yeah. Ah, there's I'll Kitchens make it. making a hard hit. That's kind of yeah. what he does. That's who it's he nice is. Tackle, but. There's yeah. a little zone. 
Yeah, they'll run some cover four stuff yep. too. You see it here. It's not what they base out of. This might be cover three. That's no, cover four. Um, maybe cover six. I think you could get Jaheim Bell or Morlock behind these linebackers with how aggressive they are. And I, I, I don't know how that Maui Noah kid looks pretty good rushing the passer. I, I, w- I would try to test him in coverage and see how that goes. Yeah, I think this is, I think you can do stuff like this. I know this looks contested, but I just don't think their corners are really that great. And they're banged up, aren't they? Didn't yeah. they get banged mm-hmm. up against NC State? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Clemson Clemson does not have a great receiving core. This might be the most they've thrown for all year. No, there's a lot of open spaces in this. In this, You said they played – how much man did they play here versus zone? 70%. This is zone. This is kind of a – it looks like a, a kind of match zone because you see him kind of carry this guy. But they're clearly zoned off here. There's a lot of empty bubbles. Yeah, I mean, I they don't have enough – they they wouldn't have had enough time to really put in too much match man stuff that's really tricky to throw the ball against, I think. God, they bring pressure every single play, though. Man, Clemson got lucky there. Yeah, when they're not blitzing, I mean, they've got a decent pass rush. I mean, decent. They, they, they have the fourth highest rate of pressures uh, in the country, so. Do you guys like that matchup? Do you like how Jordan Travis played against pressure this season against like blitzing or do do you trust him to be able to process stuff fast? And could that be, could that speed up Miami's demise? How do you feel about that? That's a, that's a good question. Yeah. I think that's, I think it's the question of the game. Uh, Is Ford State going to be baited into throwing the ball down the field vertically all the, all the time. Like we've seen them have to do against, or like we've seen them do against some man, um, cover heavy teams, or are they going to find other ways to get the ball out to their playmakers quickly? Let's I mean, see. Miami wants to dictate terms to you with their pressure, and how's Mike going to counter that? How do you think you might do that, Kev? You watch your, you study you studied some Miami this week. You study a lot of Mike Norvell stuff. You, you, you think we're going to see some quick some quick outlet throws, things like this, where maybe we could have some good yards after the catch against a pretty good tackling Miami team. Well, well, I think the first thing I just looked up is Florida State on the year is the eighth best team in terms of passing efficiency against pressure. So, Oof. I like that. Um, that it's not something that I think is terribly effective at stopping FSU's offense. Um, uh, but we can, if you give me a second, I'll, I'll look up kind of to see what their passing distribution looks like. All right. Well, while you're doing that, Adam, what do you see here? That is a big asshole. <laughs> Wide open tight end. That is yeah. Is it to tight end again? They really yeah. were able to get yep. something going on their well, tight ends. Look, they ran see... a little, it's a little slant and go. It's lost over the middle though. Cleared Nobody carries them. They do not play zone. Well, no, they, do play they... Zone, they blow assignments. Nobody carries them. Like that, that second level is kind of a mess. Look at, yeah. oh my God, get the ref out of there. And there's nobody there within like 10 yards. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't know what this, this, this zone is a mess. They're doing a cover four, but yeah, this guy gets stuff. stuck so much into the hole. There's no one in the middle of the field. Yeah. I don't think this guy's supposed to be here. Or he's manned up on the running back. Yeah. So then what's this guy doing? I don't know. But not, it looks like he's pretty, pretty classic cover four. I mean, this yep. and this, to be fair, this is a cover four beater. Mm-hmm. Right. You've got a post occupying the safety and then this little crosser. But I think there, um, I, I think there's a lot of thought process that our pass rush is going to get there. And, and plays like that aren't going to develop. I'm with you. I think it's they rely. It, it it's solely pressure based, and there are some. Not a touchdown there, huh? Yeah, I don't know about that. That's no. dude. I think you could pick on. Who's this? Twenty. Is that Williams? Mm-hmm. We got the guys to do it. Oh, that is that has to be a touchdown, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They, they give it to him. Dear God, Clemson was up 10 in the third. 
yeah, it all just all falls apart on them. And they just crap down their legs. I don't want to have poop legs, not hard rock. <laughs> all right. So just for just for information's purposes, um throw up there, big dog. Yeah, we'll bring it up. All right. You guys see this? Yes, but so this is it. Jordan Travis against pressure. Um I've got it kind of here. Oh, we're giving away the secret sauce. Yeah, here we go. Floor states run a lot of crossing routes and hitches, pretty standard stuff. Hitches probably from a hot route, crossing routes, you know, those are pretty standard. If you know a blitz is coming, you can get that little crosser right past, right underneath, right past the line of scrimmage. Um, High completion percentages on the, in the hitches and the crossing routes at 78%. Yeah, and they've then they've hit in some go go routes, and they're only hitting forty percent. But I mean, two hundred twenty seven passing efficiency. You can see that sometimes it's okay to sacrifice a uh, completion percentage uh, because you know it's the more efficient play by by a long shot. Um, so yeah, it, it kind of pretty standard stuff. Here's the passing tree. You know, taking some shots, hitting a lot of these little quick hitters against uh man uh against blitzes so against the quarterback pressure he's been a really good quarterback at getting the ball out and i don't think that's really i mean if they can get pressure with four then that probably changes the conversation but i don't know I, I'm with you, and you see a lot of success on those concepts where Florida State fans have been criticizing the offense for that, that's that's a lot of short stuff on that heat map yeah, it, you get, they they've adjusted to being able to to get the ball out against pressure, and you know Mike Norvell knows what he's doing when he's putting together an offense. This is what you're going to see a lot of. What's yeah. that? Just this run game, and they're just going to keep running at you. It's what that's what they do now. They are going to run and run and run and run and run. Does that Let's worry see. you at all, Adam? I don't know. I mean, numbers wise, no, because I don't. I, I think they would tell you they've got an elite run game, but if you look at the numbers, it doesn't suggest that they do. They run for an okay yards per carry. Their success rate's not great. Um, the EPA on their run game's not great. It's, They're it's not all very middle, multiple. All middle, it's all middle of the pack stuff. Well, it, I, I mean, we're seeing it here, and there are popping like seven, eight here and there, but they don't do much different. It's all the same. It's a big pile of orange crap in the middle, and then it's the guys throw well. three. Yeah, they're just running a lot of duo and, and pulling a lot of these tight ends around and just trying to get – they're just trying to outgap you and get angles with a run game. I mean, Oof. does it worry me? Sure. I mean, they're, they're good at it. It's a good run game. Yeah, um, it's, it's a very eight, solid and, run game. And this isn't a good tackling football team for Florida State. Like, Cam Deloach just got to bring, bring his big boy pants and tackle people this week physically and aggressively. Um, the, the good news for Florida State is they've got some of the best double team eaters, I think, in in the country right now, and yeah. Braden Fisk. And he has been playing great. There's been yeah, an you're uptick gonna see, in the play from Fabian Lovett too. Yeah, you're going to see motivated really Fabian Lovett with on a on a higher rep count. Jared versus is great against the run game. Pat, Pat Payton's good against the run game. Like. Feels like they've been building towards this game from like, and this is what, what you do, doing, and from a load management perspective as well. If oh, you can God. get penetration and get them negative once, yeah, it now they're all, drives. Yeah, now they're off schedule, and this right, is let's, this um, has been trouble for them. It's a good conversion. Yeah, it's a yeah. nice throw. It's a good throw by a true freshman. All right, let's go to the. Um, I don't know if you guys want to finish the series out, but let's go see their latest effort against Dorn's boys at NC State. I don't even know what Clemson's doing there. Like, yeah, they're they're playing equally bad zone. Uh, let me start off with the star of the show, Mario, Mario Cristobal. The uh, announcers really do love talking about Mario. He looks so confused all the time. It's the smart the time. He looks like he's got constipation issues all the time my guy's just got that big dump in his pants all right second and seven against a very limited uh bringing the pressure Oof. Yeah, a little nickel blitz nice replace seemed pretty well scouted here uh, obviously wouldn't shock you to see some of this on florida state we've seen jaheem bell come out of the backfield on some of this stuff we've seen trey benson lauren to a to a feely adam hill yeah we've seen We've seen quite I mean, a bit of, of that stuff. Screen games 
become a staple of the offense here re- in recent weeks. I mean, immediately what I'm seeing is that both Clemson and uh, NC State thought that there was some advantage to trying to get these safeties kind of in man coverage or their nickel corners or whoever that guy is, but attack the, the interior with either you know slot receivers or, or tight ends. So uh, yeah. that seems to be kind of what multiple teams are trying to go at. See, can we see this Miami offense? Tyler Van Dyke is playing in this game for the viewers at home. Yeah, so we, we can prepare for both. Oh, it's a physical run. Yeah, the running backs are tough. I mean, this, this is the Fletcher kid, true freshman. I mean, he runs his ass off. Yeah, I mean, NC State's got this filled up. He gets smoked there and just bounces off of it. I mean, that, that stuff's could... got to worry because we're not a great tackling team. We have not tackled well to date. No, I can count on my my hand the number of times a Florida State linebackers hit somebody that hard. Yeah, behind in the hole. We just, well, this is not what we do well. Besides Marpia Bethune, Snow. every now and then. I'm just gonna start just saying what their route was. Wide wide receiver screen again. <laughs> yeah, like the, they they throw screens and hitches. That's what that's their entire passing game at this point. Yeah, they they build everything off this run game. I mean, it's yeah. Which is, their offense is okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. That's a funky formation. Yeah, I just it just limits you though to an extent. Like mesh. There's a reason they're there's a reason they're throwing or they're scoring like I don't know what the hell their their average is, but these last few weeks their offense hasn't exactly been dynamic. Yeah, but they put up like 38 points on Temple, so you watch yourself. I just it, it's kind of a di- you feel bad. I mean, I guess the kids hurt, but I mean Van Dyke's got an arm, dude, and they got some speed at re- at, at some spots. Receiver, they they could have more explosives. They get I mean, really they- excited. They get really excited when they do this stuff, like. I almost feel like this is more important to some of these guys than winning a football game. Well, Williams it's great, gets, it's a great hit. Awesome. Williams gets I mean, burned on that touchdown run trying to make a hit like correct. this, doesn't he? Yep. yep. I mean, we want to make such a big deal about their pass rush, and it's okay, but like I think these guys are getting a little worn down. I mean, this is their this is their big guy here. And he's truly a three technique that they put out at defensive end because he's that good. He's he's good enough to play both. Um mm-hmm. But I mean, this is the first drive, and this is kind of what you're getting out of him. He gets double teamed, but you know he, he's a threat. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, um, he's definitely the the number one concern I have for Miami's defense. But I, I, there's a level at which you're gonna be able to block these guys. You know, like <laughs> yeah, it, it, he's gonna have a tough time without the diversity of the of the pass rush moves to get around a guy like a Bless Harris. Now in the running game, I mean, Bless can take a, you know, he he might get pushed back from a power standpoint. Oh, here's a hitch route. Come back. Surprise. I haven't seen one of those before. Not a lot of effort in these routes. 84 is kind of jogging across the middle of the field. The passing game doesn't look very cord. Like, it's just they do want, it sounds like it's not really like a passing route concept, Kev. It's like they call screen. They call slant. They call like it's like one route plays. It's screen and hitch. That's that's probably about sixty percent of their targets this year. Dude, what happened here? Well, it's Jet. They've got some funky ass formation. <laughs> it's I love like, this. Are we gonna do this? I don't, know. I have <laughs> I don't no idea. So. What is going on? So this dude? is your seven guys on the line of scrimmage. So this guy's yeah. eligible and this guy is, but I don't actually think they're eligible because of their numbers. This is hilarious. And they run it back, and Miami has numbers, right? Like they have number, like, kind of, but they don't know how to fill the the, the yeah, lanes. They don't know how to fit it. Two, yeah. two, two, or the lot. Taylor and Maui know are up the field, and you should be able to cut it back. Like they, I, I think they just kind of thought Miami's going to be over aggressive if you give them a weird look, and they yeah. were, you know. Dude, that is so wild. <laughs> They're just trying to get Concepcion the ball in space. Oh, they did it. Oh, stay up, bud. Oh, Double D, Dave Dorn, offensive genius. I wonder at what point Zach starts getting upset that uh, <laughs> NC State's winning. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, do love him some Miami now. Oh, big oh, Miami man. chill. Oh, what a, oh my god! What a, so I'm going to say this: like, I, I do think 
JT on Maui Noah is a mismatch. Oh yeah, dude. Seen him kind of spying a little bit. All right, MJ first... Morris. Red oh. shirt and MJ Morris. Yep. Gonna take yeah. his talents to South Beach. Who knows, dude? That's so funny that they beat Miami at home and he goes, Yeah, I'm good. It wasn't that big of a deal. I want to keep my shirt. <laughs> like, that's that's a wild. Down. All right, that's a nice little play. I think I think you can take advantage of this Miami defense being aggressive. Look yeah. at this. I mean, yep. there's just no one here. A little pick out wide. This is the ninth not game of the season. Not even really pick. Kev, does Miami get more? Are they going to get more James aggressive? Williams out, James Williams out of position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like into your point, Adam and Kev. I guess you guys. It's an open question for both of you. As their defensive line is starting to get worn down with all the snaps, and they start to be less effective in the pass rush. Does that mean they're going to have to get even more aggressive to try to generate pressure? Because it's really what this defense is based off of. Yeah, I mean, I think they're going to blitz out of frustration and become more undisciplined if you're able to hit a few shots on them. If you can get them confident and kind of playing in, in, in through the first, second quarter, yeah, it's a different story. They might kind of be a little bit more composed. Okay. This is why you're more worried about Tyler Van Dyke than Williams. This is a better yeah. throw than Williams can make. This is why he was a first round draftable ta- talent at one point in time. But that's that kid's a, nasty that kid's a solid player, George, uh, Jacoby George, or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's who you're talking about before, I think. So George is probably he's he's like their little slot guy. Um, Colby Young is the Colby other. Young's the tall one that yeah is a little bit more explosive. But Jacoby George is he's a solid receiver. I don't I don't think they run any routes that. Oh, that's a good move by the running back. Yeah. That's Parrish or Allen. Oh, they've got so many good running backs. Yeah, yeah they just they, they're just called duo your ass off and dare you to tackle them one on one. But the thing is you get a negative and they're they're in trouble. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's the key. So They'll get sure. these every once in a while. I wonder if we're gonna rud blitz more than we normally do this week. I just to try so. to get them off schedule. I would think you'll see some of it, but you know, I mean, Fuller going to do what Fuller going to do. Oh, yeah, and no you'll that. probably see Miami trying to get out of it with stuff like this. Just little quick slants, hitches. I don't think they complete those more often than not, to be honest with you. No, they don't. Well, Peyton Wilson. Good play. Yeah, hats off to him. I've made a couple good plays this drive. Run blitz. Negative. Ugh. And that's what you're talking about. That just throws them all off schedule, right? Yep. Yep. If you can... Second and 15 now, second and 14. And they really haven't shown that they can throw out of it. So third and 13, you blitz them. They're not going to win that. Whoa. I mean, I don't even know what you say about that. What the I... hell is that? <laughs> he threw it out of bounds. I mean, so oh, he... they got a rough in the passer. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, okay. He gets batted down, but it was probably going to get picked because it's. Oh, no, he's throwing the flag. Y- yeah. Well, is he throwing the flag? I thought he was throwing yeah, I think he's throwing the flag. Yeah. I think route. He loves to throw the ball to Restrepo. Yeah. Restrepo is a football player. Wow. That's high praise, Kev. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think he, he, I think he's, I think he squat on Restrepo short stuff and then they really have trouble figuring it out. Come with you, Adam. Yeah. Like, once you figure out the primary passing guy for the play, the play's basically dead because they run, they run all these plays to like one guy only. I want to point out that Johnny Wilson's only good because he's open all the time. Oh, dude, don't even, we're not <laughs> referencing other players. Ken Coleman is the 54th <laughs> best receiver. Yeah, don't, don't, guys, just don't. The, this He's the 54th been, receiver. If you guys aren't on Twitter watching some of the rivalry week clips, it's really bad analysis and terrible AI, like images. Like, just, it's not worth it. Do something productive. Right, Play let's, Sudoku. Let's, let's talk about this. Nickel All blitz. Right. Third and 10 blitz. Yeah, Morris never sees it. Yeah. They don't set this protection. The tackle on Bane. I mean, it's good pressure. He, he doesn't show it. This is very well done. Yeah, that is nicely designed. Yep. 
they'll, they'll get you there. I mean, you get third long against this team, they're going to bring some funky stuff. Well, that's, this make, is when Florida State goes to empty and kind of makes you yeah, exactly. Declare. Gonna dictate, Florida State's going to dictate terms in these situa- in these situations. I, I just I want to point out how explosive Ruben Bain was in the Clemson game, and just how much less you're getting out of him here. Yeah, and a lot of it's just because he's getting worn down. I mean, they're he's played a boatload of snaps. Yeah, he's played over a hundred more snaps in the month of October than. Jared Burst has. Was his job just to soak up the tackle, though, there for the blitzer? I mean, he's still supposed to win. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't do that. I- I'm with you, dude. I, I- He's this a really the- special ball player. I, I want to say no. that. Like, No, no. And he, at-, at the beginning of the season, man, he was, I- uh, he still is a problem, but he was a force. It's just, it's first full year of like Power Five football, and he- yeah. they played him a lot. Now, here's another screen. I wonder if they like that play. <laughs> did they really do they did three things, dude. They man. did it in the Clemson game too. Mm-hmm. Drop eight. Oh. Yeah, that's a pretty nasty catch. Yeah, I, I, I think people are blaming. I mean, you can make a better throw here. No, I mean, better throws is a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. I don't, that's it's almost, rough he just rough. never he doesn't see him. He doesn't see him sink. Yeah, he sees. I think he sees. I pause at the right spot, right there. Mm-hmm. I think he sees him get past, and he's open. You just need a better throw. Right, read. And honestly, I think a lot of those deep comebacks happen because when this guy play soft they'll come back and yeah. since he's kind of playing here they convert it to a go route Pretty standard stuff but um, gotta, gotta have the throw I think NC State baited that I think they <clears throat> were sitting on the comeback mm-hmm. and knew that he would try to rifle it in if, if you played it too hard I think that's NC State scouting that they they literally run like three passing concepts yeah you might be right. Tough run. All right, first and 10. So there's some good pressure up the middle. This 81 kid is pretty yeah. good, too. I don't Ooh. know who he is. Smokes the right guard. Smokes him off the snap. Corner's cooked. Yeah. No pass interference there? Okay. Yeah, he tackled him. Which that's the old brown or the young brown? Yeah, I'm not sure. Here's another pressure that NC State doesn't seem fully prepared for. I don't know how great could it be. This is all they do. Yeah, I mean they're showing six. Maybe he just really trusts his running back. Well, they overload it there. Yeah. It's just it's not not a very good design play on NC State's part. And that's probably because they have a young quarterback in there who can't make the check. They're yeah, kind of a hot exactly. route. And then he just this <laughs> ball just hangs up forever. Mm-hmm. And Kinchins makes a nice play on the ball. Yeah, that's yeah. an awesome. Yeah, he's very athletic. Yep. Yep. I mean they they heated up a young quarterback and got a pick out of it. I mean that's what good defensive coordinators do. Mm-hmm. I just I didn't like I didn't like Morris's options on that play on second and seven. Like I, I don't know, there was just nothing, no, no easy outlets over the middle of the field. I don't think anybody would argue that the NC State offense is dynamic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not good either. Yeah, it's garbage. Man, yeah, this, this Miami running game though, this is what they do, man. They just kind of yep. will squeak out these ten yard runs. Yep, every so often. They're really good at reading duo, really good at running duo. It's it's what they do. I just think it's how many of those can you allow on a drive versus how many tackles for loss and stuff like that you can have. Like, will Miami be able to six yards here, eight yards here, <clears throat> like double team run their way down the entire length of the field? This well, is the stuff that's killing them right now. It's like, yeah. you, Oof, you just man. get to beat. I mean, that's... Is that the true freshman kid? Yeah, I mean, he's another player who's played a boatload of snaps, and I think his body's wearing off, wearing down on him a little bit at this point in the season. Like he's obviously a really good, talented football player, but sure, he started every game for him, I believe, um, and that's a lot to ask out of a true freshman. Also, it seems like point, he's hitting that point where 
in game nine of the season, most high schools play 10, 11 games in a season, or, you know, and then if you get into playoffs, whatever, um, you know, he's yeah. at that point where he's kind of hit his limit on snaps for the year. It's, you know, it's so funny because it's a rivalry and Let's get every it, angle it, of this. Dude, it's just it's too diametrically opposed, like even ways to how how to run your team with the way that mm-hmm. Florida State rotates in and out, and they've had such a commitment to keeping guys as healthy and fresh as possible. Whereas Miami's gonna run their horses in the plays that they got, and they're gonna run it over and over and over again and leverage their talent. It's very interesting, man. Like they're so opposite. The programs are so opposite, right? It's a green dog. I can't tell. Looks like it is. Yeah, I mean they or got it's just the lead. He's just waiting to see which hole's going to open up. They got man uh, coverage. This is again a, a young quarterback not knowing his hot routes, right? Not recognizing there's pressure, holding on to the ball too long. Kev, do they ever show pressure and not apply it? Uh, they have. I mean, in the Clemson yeah, game, we just saw them kind of do it. Do a um. Disguise pressure where they dropped into the short zones. They kind of telegraph it though. You can tell when they're going to do it because these guys will be about here. Because mm-hmm. and then these guys will drop into the in the short zones to try to bait that. Um, it's it's pretty obvious, but you know it's obvious for everybody. These are college defenses, right? Got them there. Oh, Brendan Armstrong. Oh, I remember him. <laughs> hey, yeah, you. He, he didn't realize that he was the backup Wildcat quarterback for NC State? No, that's like when they brought in Jerkovich to run the old QB sneak <laughs> against us, man. They just got these like eight-year ACC vet QBs to come in for weird plays. <laughs> yeah, there's just <laughs> just a series of Wildcat quarterbacks it's who just... used to be on NFL draft boards in the ACC. Uh, I used to for be other a draft teams. pick. Glug, glug. Now I come in on third and goal from the 14. <laughs> What the they are hell? just going to muck this game up, and it's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly, ugly, ugly to start. Man, I just got think a lot of time. Yep. They the, yeah, they're yeah. they're dropping eight. Yeah, they're trying to bait them into something. Yeah, they. Well, I think they essentially just said, like, look, you, you can't, you can't line up and throw the ball against us. Third and fifteen, and and we'll stop the run at some point on first down and get you off schedule, and or you'll screw up and do something dumb and. I just I can't believe that <laughs> when three men are rushing and you've got all day to throw this ball, this is the right option. <laughs> like that's the best you got. That's crazy, isn't it? I guess he doesn't trust himself. Uh, somehow they get to second and I'm telling one. you, I think you oh, take the is... first read away from him, and right now anyway, and they he doesn't know what to do with it after that. Who would yeah, you? Ra- State's got numbers here. Who would you rather play, Adam, of the what quarterbacks? Which quarterback? The way Van Dyke's been playing, I'd rather play him because I think he's hurt too. Like I don't think he's healthy at all. <sighs> Squeak through, like you said, another one. This is that's their offense. You yeah, gotta just tackle them well. around the line of scrimmage. You gotta tackle them. I mean, NC State's got numbers. It's just, and they're a good run stopping defense. <sighs> it's a massive game for Fisk and Love it, dude. Because you see that little pocket that they had that you pointed out in the telestration, Kev. If you could just throw a block off and just mess that up, like you can snuff those runs out. But it's this is going to test Florida State's defensive tackle rotation for sure. Yeah. Oh, here's something that you might see. This is what other teams have been able to get. Uh, big run plays on FSU. So. Essentially, they're trying to get this backside gap. And by doing this crack block on the safety, it means the corner has to fill. To, uh, Fintral Cypress has been slow to fill that. Um, the NC State kid does a good job there on third and eight. Fletcher kid runs for 115 in this game. I mean, like the numbers look good, but it's on 23 carries. They only ran for 134 yards, removing sack yardage out of the game. Like, and over the course of the game, it's not great. I mean, 134 yards on 26, 28 carries. Like, that's not. Here's some good pressure. It's not something to write home about. No. And Adam, there's not too many like home run, like, like runs that could have been a home run. Like, they're, they're right. not designed to like have you beat one guy and it could be 80 yards. It's they're designed to bash up against the middle and get eight. 
Whereas right. a lot of FSU's runs are designed to be explosive, and then we don't hold on to a block enough, yeah. or a guy gets off of it. It's just a different philosophy of, of what they want to do. Honestly, watching some of these Miami games, it feels like they're they've they've gotten a little bit lucky to not not have teams score like in the red zone and like that the Clemson fumble and all that stuff. Um, it's just very NC simplistic. State driving. It's lethally simple. Yeah, their their offense. If they're, you just have to bet that for every they need six of those ten yard little squeakers on the run game to score, and you're betting that one out of every six you can get them for zero or negative one yards and stall their right. entire drive. Yep, because they're not going to be able to throw it on third and ten. They're notice how often they're in third and thirteen because you NC State's just run blitzing <laughs> and then that they should have been picked like yeah that should have been game yeah this, this one should have been yeah they're not even disguising anything no there's no creativity on those routes at all yeah i i really i think part of it's because they you know have a new new offensive coordinator this is their third offensive coordinators in three years they can only do so much in the passing game, but I I think it's becoming known kind of what their plan is. Here's a good play by them. I guess on the bright side, man, because they only do five he things. They the could... field, they run jet right into them. Yeah, just like we saw Florida yep. State do. Yep. They, they could really run some. This could be a big tendency breaker for Miami if they get to like page three and four of the playbook. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's just a it's a product of what's weird is that they're running the same run plays they ran last year, but a different set of passing plays. It's oh, it's on, it's a very Frankenstein-y offense, dude. It just it doesn't. I don't know. The cohesion's weird. Yeah, I think I think when they had the athletes that could just break it, and against Texas A and M, they hit some of those shot throws. Yeah. They really haven't been able to do it since. So. I mean, there's a chance they're able to hit it, but. And if they do, then it's a de- it's a it's wow. a definitely different offense. That's a tough run, move. man. Yeah, but look at the move in the hole there. Whoop. Yeah, that's nice. And those are the things that scare you because that's a super talented young player. Like, this is why I think when Florida State fans and analysts talk about Miami, they give them due respect and say, I mean. You can see why there's some excitement for them. Oh, I'm back. I watched but your screen. They've only got six points, and we're in the end of the third quarter. Like. It's they do it well, but that's the pro. Like they do the same thing over and over again. It, like you said, it's it's an easy scout, but they're effective at what they do. It's just the bet of can they do it seven yeah. times to yeah, drive every eight. drive. Let's see what happens. Is this the? I think this is the one where <laughs> wide receiver screen. <laughs> this is the one where they get stopped on fourth and one. Well, he made this one. Oh, on this drive, Adam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the drive, I believe, that kind of turned it. Man, I just cannot get over how many just wide receiver screens they run. <laughs> Dump off to the back. Yeah, here comes fourth and one, and they get stopped. Man, that's a pride. That's a pride killer for this team. Yeah, when that's your strength. Oh, dude, after all the tough runs that kid's made, that's where you don't get the tough yard. Oh, that's brutal. And then they go, and then NC State goes 99 yards. And then who is this? This is the play you got to run on him. I, is this I King really Brennan? Hope, yeah, this yeah, is Brennan Armstrong. I really hope Mike breaks out some speed option against them. I think it's there. All these yeah. weak side, all this weak side looks that they give where they rotate heavily. I, I think you can pop it couple of them on them. And then Williams, of course, does what he always does. <laughs> Good for one a game. At least, right? It seems like it. That's probably not fair, but eh. it, just, it does seem like his MO. Just, it just didn't so, have to do that. I just wanted to look this up just to kind of get a feeling. So Florida State is Oh, 50. James. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry, Kevin. They're, we're 50 what? That tackle was so poor, dude. Let's see. I missed that. 
Look at this. Oh yeah. It's dude, you're going for the that. you're going for the highlight, man. Always. Like, in a, it's like, you gotta have that tackle. <laughs> so it's 10 6. Dude, you're playing for a night game against your rival and Doak. Ugh. And that's what you that's your best effort. <laughs> just kind of pushed him. Yeah, he's playing, he playing for me. That's what he's playing for. That's not good stuff, man. So Florida State, so this is this is the big concern, right? If if you're gonna be concerned about this game anywhere, Florida State's 51st in defensive rush success rate. Where let me see where um Miami is in rushing success rate. Yeah. So Miami's twenty me- fifth in rush success rate. So it's it's a bit of a strength on weakness there. I mean, fiftieth isn't terrible, but it's it's not great. Um, it, to to be fair, to be fair, against a team like this, that number could get worse after Saturday's game too. Mm-hmm. Right, this is what they're going to do. But to be fair, to be fair to Florida State, you you've played a couple of offense in in Clemson and LSU who have incredible success rates. Right. Like on the season, that's what they do. Is right. Success, right? Success rates. This honestly, this Miami offense is just a watered down Clemson offense. That's crazy. I, I mean, and Clemson offenses get so much crap for being simplistic, but yeah, I think you're a hundred percent right, man. I mean, they're built. They instead of inside zone, they run duo. But you know, you have a good quarterback. You don't really trust to throw the ball downfield with. You've got a decent running game with a solid offensive line. Not too many great weapons on the outside. Pretty simplistic passing game. I mean the a successful offense that tries to nickel and dime you down the field. And, you know, you, you faced a better version of that with Clemson, in my opinion. Um, even though Miami won that game. Yeah. But coming out of that game, if you look at when expectancies and such, I'm pretty sure Clemson was like way ahead. Yeah. Even, yeah, even I, with that barf of a game they had at hard rock. Um, yeah, they're an easy scout on offense, and they they're swarming and aggressive on defense, which I think I think opens them up. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you might could scheme some things. Um, what what's the best offense they've played face this year? Let's think about that. I mean, that's a tough ask because their schedule is so freaking weak. Because when they played A and M, A and M had Weigman, didn't they? They didn't have Johnson. I think A and M's mm-hmm. been playing better offense as of late. Virginia, We're gonna look that up. Tech, bad, bad. I don't know some crap in there. They played a lot of crap at the beginning. Of, what'd you say? Temple was one. Uh, U U UNC is a hundred percent best yeah, yeah, offense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And how do, how do they compare to ours, Kev? So according to F plus, um, UNC. Let me find them real quick. Um, North Carolina has the seventh best offense. Florida State's got the ninth. So decently comparable. So Miami, UNC, what was the score of that game? 41-31. Yeah, they scored 41 points on them. So, yeah, Florida State's offense might be a half step behind it. Uh but AM put up 33 on them. And that's that was at the beginning of the year. They played UNC yeah. when they were pretty healthy, I think, right? Like this, they're Virginia water, put up 26. They're coming in beat down and, and wounded in the in the backfield, man. And with Keon Coleman coming back, who knows what Johnny Wilson's status is, like that. It's tough. It's a tough matchup for that defense that is the best part of their team at this point of the season in mm-hmm. that environment. Especially yeah. with the way their quarterback play has been, because they might have to play on some short fields and even more tired on some three and outs when they're when the running game ain't working the way they think it will. It's gonna be I tough think, for them to win without turnovers. Yeah, that's that's the thing, is that their defense the those numbers don't fully capture their defensive performance. Mm-hmm. Like UNC scoring forty one. Well, they scored forty one, but they also had what two or three turnovers. So yeah. like yep. the defense was more effective than 41 points. Sure. Um actually UNC had no turnovers. So never mind on that one. But um <laughs> the other ones. 
But, but what I see too, Kevin Adam, is a lot of those hits that they make that we've seen Florida State have some ball security issues the past like three or four weeks, not necessarily leading to turnovers, but they've had a lot of turnover worthy plays. Yeah, I'm thinking about some of those hits coming off the edge from some of that pressure. You get a fumble at the wrong time and then you kind of you can kind of get yourself into like a Boston college type situation to where it, it just all depends. Florida state needs to be sharp. They need to be on their game. It's a talented team. And at the beginning of that game, you are going to take Miami's best punch that I think they've thrown at anybody all season from a I defensive agree. perspective. Um, you know, Mario wants this game bad because there's 9 million recruits there. They're not there to see Miami, but they are going to be have to force to watch Miami during the course of being at the Florida state game. Mm-hmm. Both coaching staffs are going to come with their best from an X's and O's perspective. Mm-hmm. I know who I favor in that matchup, but we'll see. I mean, what do you think? After after watching the film, do you feel better or worse about that matchup? Adam, you go first. Um, or the same. Could feel the same. Yeah, I think I feel about the same. Like I think their defensive line against Florida State's offensive line is, is advantage them. But I... I do think Florida State will be able to hold up pass protection wise against them, which is important. Um, but they're going to bring pressures. But we've seen Mike against these teams that want to bring pressure. You're going to go empty. You're going to spread them out and do do what you do. Like assuming all your we- weapons are healthy. Like that's not a big fear of mine. Like this team knows how to dictate to these pressure heavy teams to to have to force their hand to show show what, where they're coming from. And then Jordan's a veteran. He knows how to handle that. So. That kind of stuff doesn't concern me too much. Um, look, I, I mean, I think that there's a really good chance that this plays out a lot like the pick game did, and it is a really ugly <coughs> first half, and they're playing their balls off, and you know, you're they're just kind of mucking it up, controlling the pace of the game. Uh, I think that that potential really exists. Um, I just think over the course of the four quarters, while they're going to play hard, I don't think they have the depth. I don't think they necessarily have the skill at some of the skill positions um, to, to really kind of keep up with you. So I don't think they have the discipline either <laughs> over 60 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Guys, just, I mean, we kind of talked about it with James Williams. Like they, they, they've just got a guy or two that's going to do something selfish that's going to cost them. But look, Florida State's one of the more heavily penalized teams too in the country. So, you could say the same for, for Florida State. Um, I, I expect Florida State to turn the ball over. I think it'll happen. Um, they, there's just so much pressure coming all the time uh, that, you know, I'm sure Miami's going to get one. I think you're going to get one. Um, if Florida State's had been around the football quite a bit. They haven't been able to come away with them yet. I, ex- I think there's a decent <laughs> chance you're going to get one. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I got a feeling that Keon Coleman's hearing a lot of what's being said right now. <laughs> he shows up in these big games, man. You can't I'm deny telling it. you, bro. Something Just a couple hot, a couple hot and spicies, a McFlurry. Smack the crap out of LSU. Like, uh, hey. I would, I would have shut up if I was Miami people. But you're de- good luck. Yeah, you're you're talking to the wrong one. You're talking to the wrong one that voluntarily eats that pregame meal before a three thirty game and does what he does. Kev, I mean, what do you think? Do you want to save kind of what your thoughts of the game are for your video for your video preview prediction? I mean, when we when we last spoke on the instant reaction, you felt pretty confident. You still feel that way after diving deeper into Miami? Yeah. So uh, I I actually got this data from a guy on Reddit. Uh, oh, I know. So this is kind of interesting. So PB7090, if uh, if you're out there, I don't know if this is super visible. Um, but essentially what this is, is SP plus chances for Florida State to beat Miami over the course of the year. Uh, so you see Florida State had a 78% win percentage uh, before the season started. Uh, and that that went down to the low of 50% uh, because SP plus really liked that Miami was blowing out Bethune Cookman uh, while Florida State was struggling against Boston College. Fair enough. Mm. So it was a coin um, flip by week five. Coin flip by week five at home. So it factors that in. But since that time, what you've seen is just Florida State is getting better and Miami's getting worse. And you can see that percentage 
rise from 50 to 60 to 65 to 70 to 78 to 82. And there's a clear trajectory here, right? Like this, mm -hmm. this isn't, um, there's no deviation here. It's, it's pretty obvious what's going on. Um, and so I, to me, I, I think that, I think Miami's wearing down. I think Florida state's moving up. I think Norvell's a better game day coach than Cristobal. I think this Miami defense is good, but I think they're a little bit high in, in reps. I think they're a little bit over aggressive. I think there's some things you can scheme there. I think their offense is kind of predictable. Um, I, 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 I want to give respect to Miami's defense to their defensive line. I think there's some real talent there that could potentially give you trouble, but I really do think Florida state's one of the best teams in the country at, at, at protecting against that and making sure that doesn't hurt you. Miami has been able to stay in some of these games because they've been able to get turnovers. Florida state doesn't turn the ball over a lot. Um, and when they do, it's on fumbles, which I, I don't think are as replicable because it's usually because a ball hits at a certain point. Sure. Um, I, I don't really see Miami sticking sticking with Florida State uh, for, for very long. It It's, it's going to come down to at what point does Florida State hit that shot and Miami just kind of decide that they're going to give up. Um, you saw it really early last year. Probably won't happen that early this year. Um, I think I think Florida State circled this on their calendar for for a long time, and I I don't think that Miami's had that luxury. Uh, I could be wrong. I'm probably seeing this through garnet and gold glasses, but I I really think Florida State runs away with this sooner rather than later. And they haven't to to your point. Miami hasn't had the luxury because they've been in dog fights week after week after week of their own. I mean, multiple overtime games. It's tough. They're they're playing a lot more. They, their kids have a lot more reps, but they've got a lot more reps just in general as a team. High stress games where like these these games were these unimpressive Florida State wins where you're beating Pitt by 17 and Wake by 25 and all this stuff. Miami's barely beating Virginia in overtime. They're losing to Georgia Tech. They're they're in dog fights with a lot of the teams that they should be beating up on with the talent of that defense and they haven't done it. And I think I'm with you, Kev. I think this is where it's going to pay off for Florida state. Now, if this game would have happened week two or week three, fresh yeah. Miami, fresh Florida state, I still give it to FSU, but this is just with all the tape that's on Miami now. Like if, for if some, if us three bums can sit here and start predicting their passing game after 30 <laughs> minutes of watching film, then I, th I think Adam Fuller understands what they're going to be doing. <laughs> I think so. It's just a tough, it's bad timing, but we'll see. We'll see. You got to give the defense all the credit it's due, a turnover here and there, and the rivalry juju. You never know what's going to happen. But speaking of one thing where you know it's always going to happen, when you watch X's and Knowles, you know you're going to get premium content. It's because we love you. You are not a bunch of bums like us. You are nice, learned, respected people who I'm sure are subscribed and have your notifications on to this channel. I know you're on knowles 247com and subscribe because you're such great, respectable pillars of your community's paragons of virtue. And if you're not, like I said, feel bad for yourself. knowles 247com It has everything that you need for this absolutely massive rivalry week. Like Kevin said, Mike Norvell and the boys have circled this on the calendar. It is a massive, massive weekend with recruiting implications, implications of where two programs diverging could be headed. It's a huge week, and we want you there on Knowles247.com to witness all of it. For Adam, for Kevin, I'm Trey. We hope you enjoyed this different version of X's and Knowles. If you guys liked it, maybe we'll do it for Florida. If you hated it, maybe we'll shelve it and never do it again. Who knows? We answer to you, the people, because we love you. It's rivalry week. Keep chopping.